Well, good evening, everybody. Um, sorry this is starting out so late, but um, th I've been having trouble with my, my camera for some reason. Um, you'll notice that my the C on my hat is backward, and uh, we're kind of back in the way we were before. Um, but something interesting was happening whenever I would try to flip-flop the screen. Um, it would turn green, and I don't know... Uh, for those of you that are chiming in, is uh, is the image green? I'm trying to figure out if this is from my phone or if it is just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So if you could, if you could help me out, I would appreciate it. Um, hey, Joan. Hey, Joanne. Um, we can keep going this way, but I, I'm not sure if it looks right or not. So somebody, when you get a chance... Um, let me know if it looks green, if I'm all Hulk vision, because that's what it looks like on my screen. Um, not sure what you guys are seeing, so um, if anybody could let me know, that would be great. Um, I do want to update you all on something. Um, one of the other reasons why I'm a little bit later tonight. All right, Joni says I'm green, so I'm going to flip back so that it's not weird. Um, not sure why it's doing that, but let's see if that makes any difference. Is that better? Um, we'll just have to deal with things being backward tonight. So, um, I'll have to, help, I guess, restart my phone or, or do something. But anyway, um, hopefully this is better. Even though things are backward, um, we'll survive. But, um, I, what I was going to update you all on was, um, I, uh, had a chance to talk with Chuck Ferguson, um, before starting this tonight, just to kind of see how he was doing. Things went well with his procedure today. He's going to have probably about 10, 12 days before they'll get some results back on the biopsy, but he's, he's doing well. So thanks for your prayers for him. I know he appreciates that. Kathy appreciates those too. And, um, I had something kind of, you know, short for tonight that, uh, we were going to do since we're kind of at the end of the week. And, um, so I just happened to ask Chuck, I was like, Hey Chuck, what's your, what's your favorite Bible verse? And, um, what would be something that would be fun to maybe to look at, uh, maybe in your honor tonight. And, and, uh, so he gave me a good verse to, to look at one that you may be familiar with. Um, one that might be, you know, real important in, in your life. And it actually ties in with the, um, the wisdom, uh, connection that we, we've been talking about with, with, uh, Psalms, um, as well as the, uh, the book of Colossians. And so, um, this is going to be from the book of Proverbs, and it's Proverbs chapter 3. And um, the entire book of Proverbs is, um, it's just doused with wisdom. And um, some there's, sometimes there's little statements of wisdom. It's almost like you could almost carve out some verses, and they would almost be like, um, you know, fortune cookies, if you will. Um, just kind of nice little statements. One of the things I do want to mention about Proverbs, um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in some of our studies. I know the times that I've taught on Proverbs in particular, one of the things I always try to, to stress is that when you look at, at the book of Proverbs, you have to see it as a book of principles. Um, and by principle, I mean um, there are principles that if put in place um, should, should work things out to the good. Now, just because something's a principle doesn't mean that it's a promise. And so you'll, you'll see different parts of um, the Proverbs that, that, you know, are very promisey, very, you know, um, the promises from God himself. Uh, but, but, you know, the one I kind of go back to as a good illustration is the idea of, you know, train up a child in the way of the Lord, and, and when he's older, he'll never depart from it. Um, you know, there are good and wonderful Christian people who raise good and wonderful um, kids, and they get to adulthood or maybe at some point in their life, and they decide that they're going to they're gonna leave the faith, and they, they wander away from God. The one thing you don't want to do, either as a parent or even as a person who is looking at this environment saying, well... They must not have done enough for their child, you know, because Proverbs says if you train up a child in the in the way of the Lord, when they're older, they'll never depart from it. Um, that's a principle. That is that is something that, you know, rightly applied should happen, but people still have choices. And so um, even though we will hold on to that scripture as being true in the sense that if rightly applied, um, that's, that's good, sound advice. That's good wisdom. That's godly wisdom to bring your kids up in the way of the Lord, so that when they are older, they won't depart. Um, but that's not necessarily a promise that it won't happen. Um, you know, some there's some people I know who are deeply, deeply connected and love the Lord with all their heart. They've done everything for their kids, and their kids make a decision that's their own. So, um, but the the proverb we're going to look at tonight is in chapter three, and um, and it really has more of a promise ring to it than a than just a, a general principle. 
Um, and it's at the at the front end of this book, and and um, really about the first eight or nine chapters of the book of Proverbs. Um, they're they're kind of nicely packed together um, to kind of talk about the benefit of wisdom, to talk about the benefit of listening to the the teacher's um, teachings, the one who is imparting the wisdom, um, and and you know whether it's Solomon or it's somebody else who is writing these proverbs. What you have is this kind of like, I am imparting this to you so that you might know how to live life wisely. Um, and so I thought this was, this was going to be kind of fitting for maybe even just putting a capstone on the, um, the study in Colossians. But this is Proverbs 3, and um, I'm just going to read verses 1 through 10 and um, kind of talk a little bit about, about what this is saying. It says, My child, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments, for they will provide a long and full life, and they will add well-being to you. Do not let truth and mercy leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and of people. I want to start here, and this is really just before Chuck's favorite verse. Um, the idea here is, is this plea to this child, this person who is, is going to be hearing this wisdom from a father or from a teacher. Um, the idea here is that that this this wisdom will will allow for not just a long life but a full life. And there are two things that I think are crucial here. And the first one is um, truth and mercy. Um, the idea of truth, you know, always be pursuing what is true, what is what corresponds with reality, what is right about God and about life. But then this this idea of mercy. Um, this idea of being somebody who is compassionate. And these are, these are two components of even the nature of God. You know, from God, the, the source of wisdom, the source of life, um, you have this connection to truth and to mercy. And it says that you'll find good favor and good understanding in the sight of God and of people. There's always this kind of how you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and how you love your neighbor as yourself. There's this upward love and this outward love. Um, and the two have to go hand in hand. And so right living, wise living, is one where you have good favor with God, but also good favor with those around you. Uh, this goes back to that idea of accurately reflecting into the world who God is, um, and then demonstrating in how you live your life that, um, that this is how life is meant to be lived. And when you apply these things, then you will have good favor with not just God, who's watching, but even with those who are around you, who are in your world. And this is the verse that goes from here. Verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will bring healing to your body and refreshment to your inner self or to your soul. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first fruits of all of your crops, then your barns will be filled completely and your vats will overflow with new wine. Um, at the very beginning of this, this idea of saying, trust in the Lord with every part of your heart, every part of, and, and when we use the word heart here, it's not just, you know, your emotions or your, you know, the, the depths of who you are. It, it includes kind of this idea of the mind, um, this, this soul um, aspect of your life that is um, fully kind of who you are. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And he says, don't just trust on your own understanding. You know, um, there may be circumstances in our lives. There may be things that we've experienced where we're like, hey, this might seem true or this might seem to be the best way. But if it's contrary to what God is calling us to do, then it should be measured up against his truth, against his mercy. And it should be, it should be brought into alignment with him and not with our own understanding. Um, this is how people kind of break away from what's true sometimes. The idea being that, well, God says this, but I don't like it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own thing. Um, it might seem wise in your own understanding, your own estimation to do that um, because of whatever reason you have, but ultimately it's going to lead in a, in a way that your path will be crooked. It will, it will dart everywhere and anywhere because things are constantly changing. Our understanding is constantly changing. Excuse me. Oh, um, I made the mistake of drinking one of those um, waters that's like carbonated, and um, I got in from cutting the grass, and I'm I'm just burping like crazy. So apologies. Um, but what the point of of what this song, or this uh, this proverb is going on to say is that if you acknowledge the Lord, if you 
Um, it's not just like giving a nod to God, but this idea of that in all of the ways that you're going, if you connect with God and you connect to him and you acknowledge him and you give him, you know, it's kind of like doing things in his name or, or giving him the praise and the glory for what's taking place even in your, your life. It says he's going to make your path straight. He's going to take those crooked parts of your life and he's going to line them up and, and straighten them out. It doesn't say that they're going to necessarily be easy. Um, you know, I think sometimes this idea of, you know, he's going to make your path straight. He's, he's going to align with, um, with himself the very best way to go. And it will be a pattern of following him. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easy. Now, straight is definitely easier than being crooked and, and being tossed all over the place. But there's still this idea of if you're going with God, he's going he's gonna to take you in the, the right direction, the right way. Um, and it goes on and it says that, you know, that, that we should turn away from evil um, and fear the Lord. Um, this idea of fearing God you know, sometimes it's confusing to people. Fear The fear of the Lord, um, we, there's even, um, you know, another passage that says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And and the, the truth of that is not to say that God wants us to be cowering in fear of him, um, fearful that he's going to get us, but this idea of being in awe of who he is, being in awe of his power, being in awe of his knowledge. Um, there should be a little bit of something terrifying about God when we think about him in, in light of ourselves. Um, you know, it's kind of like what the, the psalmist writes when it's like, you know, when I consider the heavens, when I consider everything that you have created, who am I that you are mindful of me? Um, that's a fearful response. It's an appropriate response because it's this, I'm, I'm in awe of the wisdom and the power and the, the glory of God, but I'm not, I'm not cowering in fear as though he's going to squash me. Um, as much as it is, I am respectful. I'm respecting his place in my place. And and that should be one of the things that keeps us, you know, turning from evil, is this idea that God is for me, that God wants me to do the right thing, and that when I step away from him, then I should be afraid of him. I should be afraid of the wrath and the judgment that would be coming. But when I'm with him, you know, I'm, I, I have no fear. And then he goes on and he talks about how we should honor God with, with what we have. This idea of, of, of honoring God, giving him worship with even our stuff to say, Lord, you've brought this to me. You've given it to me to be of use. And I want to, I want to commit this to you and to your kingdom. Um, not that God needs it. And this isn't a way of kind of buying God's favor because, you know, sometimes we get confused because the last thing that he says here about your barns will be filled completely and your vats will overflow with new wine. This isn't necessarily a promise of prosperity. The idea here is, is that if you honor God, whatever may be lacking in your life will be filled up. That doesn't mean that necessarily you're going to, you know, have stacks of cash. It may just mean that you have the right relationship with God and with those around you and that fills you that fills your barns, or that fills your vats with this new wine. You know, um, I think of the time when, when Jesus is talking to the, the woman at the well, and his disciples have gone out to get something to eat, and um, they come back and they're like, hey, you want some food? And Jesus' response is, I have food that you don't know about. Um, I'm, I'm full, you know. And, and he's, what he's referring to is this, this conversation that he's had with this woman um, the fact that God is kind of filling him in this this weird, you know, this weird way where he is satisfied with something more than food, with something more than what these disciples were bringing him. And I think this this can be applied to this. It, it can definitely mean that God's going to bless you with with opportunities to be more and more generous. And so you might get a bunch of stuff because your attitude about stuff is about how can I get rid of this? How can I how can I bless other people? It might also be that what you're filled with is this knowledge of God. You're filled with this refreshing that comes. Um, I love the fact that when he says to, we are to turn away from evil, that this will bring healing to our body and refreshment to our inner being or to our soul, our inner self. This idea that, that honoring God, turning away from evil, um, that somehow this brings healing to our body. It brings wholeness to who we are. And it brings about this refreshing um, this is something interesting that even even Peter mentions in in the the book of Acts, where he he calls people to repent, and he says, you know, he he tells people that they should turn, they should repent, so that they might experience this 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 time of refreshing. Um, 
there's something about stepping away from the things that are wanting to kill us and stepping into the life and the nourishment that comes from God, um, knowing that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God's mouth. And this is the sort of thing that should fill us up. And I don't know about you, but like, you know, when I was, I, when I was reading through this before even starting the video, um, you know, that, that verse stood out to me that like, man, I need, I need refreshing. Um, I need healing to my body in the sense that, you know, we get run down, we get worn out. Um, and, and the charge here, the, the wise thing, what the prudent thing for someone to do is to trust in God, you know, even when it seems difficult, even when the path doesn't seem straight, acknowledge him and everything, trust in him with your whole heart. Don't just lean on your own understandings. Um, pause a little bit, stop, think, pray, um, trust in his leading, um, turn away from the things that you know are evil, things that you shouldn't do. Um, stay on that straight path. And, and as you do that, you will bring healing to your body. You'll bring, bring refreshing, refreshment to your, to your soul. Um, and, and that will in turn, you know, also spur this, this heart for generosity, to be a source of refreshing to others, to be a source of, of joy, having, having that good relationship with those around you. Um, I'm really glad that, that Chuck wanted to share this tonight because I think it's one of those things that's good for us to remember, especially when this, you know, a difficult time like we're in right now. It's hard sometimes to trust. It's hard, it's hard to trust with our whole heart, our whole being. Um, it's hard sometimes to acknowledge him in everything that we're doing. Um, that doesn't mean that as we walk around, we just count all the things and make sure that God's there. Um, but we can be thankful. We can be prayerfully thanking God for things like, you know, I cut my grass today. My, lawn, my lawnmower's working, you know. Um, I got to cut the whole yard, you know. It's a push mower. I wish it wasn't a push mower, but I got some exercise today. Um, there are those sorts of moments where even in some of those mundane things, we can be praying continually, thanking God, um, trusting Him, and then out of that, um, allowing Him to bring that healing to us that we need. And so, um, it's the wise thing to do is to always stay connected to God, um, to trust in Him, and um, and and to seek that that sort of refreshing that comes from Him. Um, I did want to mention that uh, next week we're going to be going into the uh, the book of Habakkuk, um, thanks to Joanne's um, recommendation. I think this would be cool to to step a little bit into the Hebrew scriptures. Um, you'll notice when I refer to the Old Testament, I try to refer to it more and more by the term Hebrew scriptures, and there's a reason for that. Um, it is the Old Testament in that it's the uh, the covenant that God has, and then the new covenant under Christ. So we 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 have that. But um, I think it will be good to go into the Hebrew scriptures and see um, the greatness of God, you know, um, throughout His entire story. And um, and and Habakkuk is a really cool book because of just this conversation that he has with God, what God says back to him, and just um, how like at every turn God keeps blowing his mind. So. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy, enjoy that. Um, I also think next week what I'd like to do, um, and, and unless I get like a ton of pushback from this, um, I'd like to try to move our time to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I'm just finding out that more and more I'm running into some scheduling conflicts with Tuesdays and Thursdays for some reason. And, um, and so I, I don't want to shortchange these and I don't want to miss out on them. But I think what I'm going to try to do is just do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've loved, I can't believe that we're like six or seven weeks um, into to doing this. But um, I might have to check my math on that. It might not have been that long. But still, it's been, you know, for five days a week, um, every week, it's, it's, been, it's been a good haul. Um, and I just, I don't want to get burnt out by it. And I don't want other things to suffer. So... Um, you know, unless there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, um, I'd like to move to that time. So, um, let me close out with a word of prayer and, um, uh, pray you guys have a great weekend. Don't forget on, uh, Sunday to, uh, to join in on the online service, which will be, um, connected through our main Facebook page and you can check it out here as well, or at least check the link to that. Um, also there's, um, there's still the, the 1030, um, communion time, um, for people who are, 
um, wanting to stop in at the church. Um, we have a couple elders who meet there and, and they kind of keep the distancing things um, in check. Um, uh, you know, with that, we just always encourage people, if you're uncomfortable, do not feel you need to be to be doing that. If you're sick, if you're, um, you know, in a, in a high risk kind of zone, um, you know, we want you to be safe. But at the same time, um, we know that there are several people who are taking advantage of that. So, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will still be at 6.30, so thanks for asking those questions. But yeah, that'll be the plan. Um, I'll try to stick to that time slot as best as I can, and um, and we'll kind of go from there. So um, if you've got any questions or any prayer concerns, um, throw those out to me. Uh, we'll be happy to be praying for you guys, and um, just know I love you. So let's pray. Um, Father, we just thank you for this time together tonight. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom of your word. And the reminder that um, that we need to hear, even even when maybe we've read a passage a hundred times or a thousand times, um, you know that the truth still rings out of your word, um, the goodness of placing our trust in you, of acknowledging you, and seeing how you are with us every step of the way. Um, God, we want to be people who turn away from evil and who who recognize your leading and, and straightening the paths that we might have um, a clear view of you and where you're going. Um, God, help us when the times get difficult to, um, to say no to sin, to turn from evil, that our bodies might be, might be healed, that our souls might be refreshed, and that we might, um, we might be able to respond in such a way that, that um, allows us to be generous and allows us to be um, worshipful in how we approach you. Um, Lord, thank you for being a God who loves us. Thank you for um, allowing us into your presence through the blood of Jesus. And, um, and you want to meet with us. And um, sometimes that can be a, a fearful thing, and that's not necessarily bad. Um, but Lord, in all things, may we see your truth and your mercy, um, your love, and may that be a part of our life too, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, love you guys. Love you deeply and miss you. And um, pray you have a great night and um, a great weekend. So keep loving each other. Keep reaching out. Um, keep encouraging and, and lifting up those around you. Um, if you're able to encourage your neighbors or people who are around you, do that, um, you know, and, uh, and help them to see Jesus uh, in you. And I'll do my best to get my phone fixed because I'm frustrated that for some reason it's green. But, hey, we'll, we'll survive. Have a great night.